first. Okay, so the session is getting recorded now. Uh, so we have discussed what is performance testing. Okay, so it is done by real users or is it done by virtual users? Is it done by real users or virtual users? So it is done by V users or virtual users. Okay. So going forward, I'll be calling this as V users. Wonderful. So then we have discussed the different types of users. Okay. So the what are the different types of users we have discussed? What is the first one? What is the first one? The concurrent users. The second one is simultaneous users. Okay, so let me unmute you all guys. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm muting from my side. Okay, so at least from my side, I am unmuted all of you. Okay, so you're self muted guys. So in case if somebody wants to unmute yourself, you should be able to talk. Uh, you should be able to talk. So yeah, so unmute all the people. So I've unmuted from my side. In case if you think that I'm muting you, please let me know guys. Okay, so simultaneous users and finally the user base. Okay, so any application, the users which are there on that application at that point of time. Right now in India it's 7.08 a.m. At now uh, at this time which is 7.08 a.m. Okay, how many people which are there on the system? How many users who are there on the system? They are concurrent users. Okay. So actually I have to put the simultaneous users ahead of concurrent users. Okay. So at this point of time, which is 7 or 8 a.m. Certain users who are doing the same functionality on the application or in other words, in our language, it's the same transaction. Okay. Same transaction. I know I haven't uh, coined in the term transaction yet or I haven't explained, but right now we can say the same functionality. On the application on that application those are simultaneous users the same functionality could be the logins or it could be logouts or it could be add to cart or it could be uh, uh, or it could be checking out or uh, any of those functionalities so you are they are doing the same functionality of the application they are simultaneous users but very rarely we get to use this when we do the performance testing it's just for the definition purposes I am giving you this but concurrent users is they are on that system but they could be doing different transactions. So they are on that application, but they could be doing different things. Some of them could be, you know, uh, canceling the transaction. Some of them could be checking the history. Some of them could be making the, you know, purchasing something or doing the window shopping or logging in, logging out. But they are doing certain things on that particular application. Then they are concrete users. The user base is all the registered users in general. Okay. <clears throat> So all the registered users. So this is what is the types of users. Then we went ahead and started looking into the software architecture. Okay. So we have understood why as a performance tester, we have to understand the software architecture of an application. Why guys, why we need to understand the software architecture as a performance tester? Why? <coughs> Any idea? You can unmute yourself and speak. It's totally fine with me. At least from my side, I've unmuted all of you. It's a combination of software and system components and, uh, and connection. <laughs> Something. Okay, Majid. So you're giving me the definition of uh, software architecture. It's a combination of software plus the comp system components plus the connections. I totally agree with you. But why, as a performance tester, I need to understand the software architecture of the application? Why is it necessary? So you can to understand. So you can pinpoint and analyze where the bottlenecks are in the system. Perfect. Bang on. So pinpoint and analyze the bottlenecks. So that's the reason why. Or in simple words to identify the bottlenecks. 
So this is the reason why we are doing the performance testing guys to look at the performance. If the performance is good, everybody is happy. There's no problem with that. But if the performance is bad, this is when the things gets dirty. And this is when you need to analyze the bottlenecks as to pinpoint as to where it is. Okay. And analyze the bottleneck. So this software architecture is the first starting point for that. Without knowing the architecture of the application, definitely you will not be able to uh, pinpoint the bottleneck. Imagine the example that I've given uh, that I gave you wherein Mark went to the restaurant. In case if he doesn't know where the kitchen is, there is no way you would be able to help his restaurant owner friend. Okay, he's a so restaurant owner who's a friend. He will not be able to help you in case the mark doesn't know where is the mark doesn't know where is the the, the kitchen. So the kitchen. So here also, without knowing the architecture of the application, you cannot identify the bottlenecks in simple words. Okay, so we, on that note, we have ended uh, yesterday. So this is a good recap. Again, don't think that the recap is waste of time, guys. So it will, you know, uh, it will create a flow. Okay, and also it will allow you to think about what has happened in the last class. Okay, so these five minutes are very, very critical. Okay, so <clears throat> now we'll get started. Uh, yeah, this is my PPT. Yeah, so what am I missing? And we also discussed about something called a peak hour as well. If you remember, that's the hour in which, uh, okay, uh, Tawheed Chaudhary is not able to, he's not able to hear me. Okay, so you will have to rejoin me again. One second, guess uh, a student is not able to hear me. So hopefully now he will be able to hear. I, I asked him. So guys, going forward, in case if you have joined and you are not able to hear me, uh, the best troubleshooting step is to disconnect and then connect back. So that will solve 90% of the time that will solve your issue. Okay. So <clears throat> now coming back, what is the server? So this is ex extremely important, guys. So let's discuss what is the server. Okay. So let's let's look at uh, what is the server in the layman's language and then you know we'll formally define that okay but first let's look at the definition a software okay when you said software it's a computer program okay it's a program or a hardware which understands your request and process your request and sends the response back any program okay any program or in other words any software which has the capability to do these three things you can call that as a server Okay, so what is a server? All this while you are thinking it's a hardware. No, 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 it's a software. Okay, yeah, later on we will also see why it's a hardware as well, but right now we'll just define it. Okay, so let's assume that it's a software, or by definition, it's a software. Okay, the server is a software. Okay, which understands your request. Any request that you're giving, it understands and it will process your request and sends the response back for the request that you have created. Okay, so let's go back to Mark's example. Okay, so Mark again visited a restaurant. So this time around, he's uh, this time around he wanted a biryani. Okay, if you don't know what is a biryani, it's a popular Indian dish. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you had had it in US. Okay, so it's very popular in the place that I come from. You know, I come from a place called Hyderabad in India. So that's one of the very very popular thing. So. <clears throat> So he has asked for biryani. So now the first thing is server. She needs to understand the request that, you know, this guy needs a biryani or at least she needs to understand that there is a dish called biryani. There is a dish called biryani and she needs to understand that. And she says that, okay, sir. So what is the first step? She understood the request. And now you see the server needs to understand the request. She cannot say that uh, biryani is a new term and then, you know, I don't know and all that. She's a server. She, she needs to understand what is that restaurant which is serving. Okay, biryani. So she understands the request. Now she gets to the kitchen and she needs to process the request. You see, the server needs to process the request. Okay, in other words, the server needs to get the biryani done. 
Okay, she needs to get the biryani done. Whether she is doing it or she is taking the help is a different story. But she needs to get it done. Okay, which means that it's a processing the request. And finally, she needs to get the biryani onto Mark's table so that he can he can enjoy the biryani or he can have the biryani or eat the biryani. So similarly, okay, our server is something like the hotel server as well okay it's something like a hotel server as well our server which is which is the computer servers okay is more like a hotel server as well okay so let's see how it is okay let's see how it is the client machine okay what is a client machine guys the machine that you are using okay any machine that you are using okay again i'm telling you what is a client a client could be your desktop a client could be your laptop a client could be your mobile phone, a client could be your tab, or a client could be anything from where you are sending the request. Okay, so it could be your mobile phone or your tablet or your laptop or your desktop or any of those machines. Okay, so <clears throat> any of those machines could be called as a client. Okay, so hang on guys, uh, just, just there are some messages coming in. Okay. Looks like everybody has joined. Some of them have issues joining. Okay. Yes. So that's a client. So from the client. Okay. So on using the browser, you said www.facebook.com and you pressed enter. As soon as, soon as you pressed enter, you have sent the request. Where, where did you actually send the request to? You have sent the request to the Facebook server. You have sent the request to the Facebook server. Okay, so there you had the hotel server. Here you have the Facebook server. Why this Facebook server? Why the request went to Facebook server? Because you are you wanted to browse Facebook. You wanted to browse Facebook. Okay. So some of them are having issues. Uh, Shredda saying that I'm not able to connect with the link. I'm not sure it's the same link. Why is she not able to connect? So in the break, probably I will help her out. Okay. So yes. <clears throat> so www.facebook.com and click enter. The request went to the Facebook server. Now, when can you call this? When can you call this uh, particular component as a server? When it can do three things. One is it needs to understand the request. Okay. First one is to understand the request. Okay. So let's assume this. It has understood the request that you wanted the. Uh, la uh, the launch page of the Facebook. Okay. What is the launch page? What is the launch page? This is the launch page. The starting page of the Facebook. I am naming it as a launch page for my convenience. Okay. For my convenience. So now as soon as you say www.facebook.com, the request went to the Facebook server. Now you can call this component as a server. First, uh, first thing what it has to do, it needs to understand the, your request. What is your request? You are requesting that you wanted the home page or the launch page of Facebook. So let's say the server has understood it. Now the first thing is clear. Now the second thing is what it needs to do. It needs to process the request. Process the request means build that launch page. Build that launch page. Okay. So let's say it has launched the page or it took the help of the other components. But whatever it is, it has finally processed your request, which means that it has built that page. Now, after building that page, it cannot keep it with itself. It cannot keep it with itself. There is no use. It needs to send the response back. It needs to send the response back. This is the reason. This is when you will be able to see that response or you will be able to see that. Okay. This response, it has created the Facebook server, but it is keeping with itself. It's of no use. It needs to send the response back to the client. So that's the third step, which is this is when the client will be able to see that page which is the home page. Okay. As a client, you won't keep quiet. Again, you enter the username, you enter the password, click on the login request. Next request goes in. Now the, as this is a Facebook server, it needs to understand that you want it to log in. Then it will process your request. Okay. Which means that it will build your wall page. Okay. Then it will send the response back. And this is when you will be able to see the wall. So again, you do something, then again, a new request will be sent to the server. The server will process it and it will send the response back. So this story, what you're seeing, it, it's a continuous story as long as you are browsing on the Facebook, as long as you're browsing on the Facebook. But concentrate on this area right now. You can call this component. You can call this component as a server when it can do three things. First, it needs to understand your request, process your request and sends the response back. Okay. 
So this component is a software, right? It's a software. We said as per the definition, it's a software. As you can see here, it's a it's a software. What is a server? It is a software or a computer program which understands your request, processes your request, and sends the response back. Okay. So it's a software. So what we have over here is a software. What we have over here, which is a software, which which first understood your request, process your request, and finally send the response back. This is when you are able to see the launch page. Okay. Now, as I've told you, you enter the username, you enter the password, click on the login button. Again, a new request will send. A new request is sent to the Facebook server. Again, it needs to send, uh, understand the request that you wanted to log in. Then it needs to process the request, which means that it has to check if your username password is correct. And then it will also have to build the launch page. Sorry, the, the wall page. And finally, it needs to send that uh, response back. This is when you will be able to see the wall page. Okay, so you see so much happens behind the scenes when you're browsing a particular website. Okay, and it happens at the fraction of the seconds. So imagine this server is in India, maybe in Mumbai. Okay, if you don't, if you don't know Mumbai, it is a place in India. Okay, or maybe it's in Shanghai, which is in China. Okay, let's say this is servers are there. Okay. <coughs> and you are in sitting in New York. Okay, sitting in New York and browsing. So the request has to travel all the way from New York to Mumbai. Let's assume it is in Mumbai and then the servers in Mumbai has to process the request and sends the response back. Again, the response has to travel from Mumbai to New York and this is when you will be able to see it. And all that happens in, in the matter of a seconds. Okay, the request traveling back to Mumbai and then and then the servers understanding, processing, sending the response back, the response traveling back to New York, all that happens in a fraction of the seconds, guys. So really fast. You don't even imagine. Okay. So <clears throat> this software which is sitting over here, this software which is sitting over here on this component, okay, it needs to understand the client's request, okay, process the request and sends the response back and sends the response back. Okay. So any software which is capable of doing above, okay, any software which is capable of doing above, above means not this one, okay, this one is just for the Facebook, but when I said above this one, a software which can understand the client request, process the request and sends the response back. Any software which is capable of doing this, we can call this as a server, we can call it as a server, okay. So now the next thing is the software, the software by itself is of no use, guys. Okay, let's say you went to the market, okay, Best Buy or something like that, and you purchased a Windows Office. You purchase what? A Windows Office. Okay, so Microsoft Office. Sorry, when I'm saying Windows Office, I meant Microsoft Office. Okay, you purchase this software, Microsoft Office. Okay, let me write it down here so that you would have it. So you went to the market and you purchased Microsoft Office. Okay, so will it of is it of any use? No. When can you use it? When you attach. Okay. When you sorry. When you attach this software with the hardware. When you attach this software with the hardware. In other words, when you install this software with the Okay, this is when you can start using this particular software called Microsoft Office. Okay, when can you start using the Microsoft Office? Just by purchasing, you will not be able to use it. Okay, all you have is a CD or the jump drive in which you got it. But that's of no use, guys. That's of no use. When you can attach that software with the hardware, maybe that hardware could be your laptop or your desktop or your tablet or whatever it is. Only when you attach this Microsoft Office with that hardware, then you can start using that. Otherwise, you will not be able to use that Microsoft Office even though you purchased, you spend all that money and purchase, you still not be able to use it. Only when you install it. Similarly, this, this, this server is also a software, but when can you use that software? Only if you can attach with the hardware. Okay? Only when you, when you can attach with the hardware. So, so when you install it with, on the hardware, then the software is of use. So that's the reason why, you no, know, the server is a combination of the hardware and software. The server is a combination of the hardware and software. Okay. 
so is it clear guys is it clear so far is it clear so far any questions or let me ask it this way any questions okay this is the right time to ask wonderful <clears throat> okay let's proceed further in that case okay so now the next question is come on can i use in that case my laptop and desktop is a hardware as well so i'll bring this server software and install on a laptop or, or a desktop so can i do that or in other words can i use my laptop or a desktop as a server what do you think guys what do you think i want to hear from you all this while whenever i heard about a server okay we are thinking that you know it's a huge room with lot of hardware and it always you know it's always kept cool it's nobody is allowed into it so we heard all this okay we heard all these stories at least if you are in the it industry definitely you have heard these stories that oh that's a server room you are not supposed to enter that okay that needs to be kept cool it's so it should be always in uh, under uh, 75 degrees or whatever it is okay so we hear all this okay <clears throat> so can we do that yes yes if you, as long as server is a software you install that on the hardware like a laptop then your laptop becomes a server it's possible guys you install on a desktop your desktop becomes a server let me give you a small story so <clears throat> when i when i came back to india from us uh, so this company the small company that i worked uh, it's it's in bangalore okay so uh, we are close to 150 150 employees by the way in india a software company you can call a software company as a small okay if it is if it is just having 150 okay if, if there are 150 employees okay software guys okay so we consider that as a small company here okay so because you know india is the land of softwares you see everywhere every nook and corner there is a software company here okay so <clears throat> now uh, i i went there and i've joined as a manager and i was working for this company so we figured out that we need an application for all the internal employees okay so employees i need not have to say internal because employees itself is internal so we need, we wanted to build an application for our employees okay we wanted to build an application for our employees so that you know it will give updates of our company okay any updates or if they wanted to apply for any leaves okay or they wanted to check how many leaves are there okay so salaries all that you know anything related to the company you know we wanted to build an application which gives updates of the company you know leaves they can apply they can do a whole lot with that you know application so by the way it is it can be accessed this application needs to be accessed only by the employees nobody else in the world so only this 150 employees can uh, can use this application okay so they, they will be given a username and password so this application is meant for only this 150 people okay so <clears throat> now what we have done is we have built the software okay we have built that software or we have developed that software okay in-house by our own team then we we deployed it in our deployed it on a desktop okay we figured that you know this particular software okay which we have developed it is not used by too many people it is used by 150 people okay the concurrency we already know what is a concurrency what is concurrency or concurrent users we figured that it will not be more than 10 users okay so at a point of time not more than 10 users will be using the application overall it is meant for 150 employees which means that the user base is 150 but the concurrency is just 10 users okay so this is the user base now you know what is the user base user base is 150 which means that the, the, at any i mean these 150 are the potential users for my website okay so <clears throat> and concurrency is 10 users so at a point of time they are not more than 10 users on the system so since the concurrency is 10 users we figured that a desktop should be good enough okay so we deployed this software on a on a desktop again deploy deploy means attaching the hardware with the software what is a deploying again deploying is attaching a, a software with the hardware. okay so usually the code that you have developed it is deployed okay usually when you inst when you buy it from outside you know or when you you install it okay but 
but when you are, uh, your installation can be done on your client machines but deploying actually happens on the servers so deploying uh, again deploying if, if you're if you're new to software just consider that deploying is something you know which is attaching the software with the hardware later on we'll understand what is the difference between you know installation and deployment there are certain differences and very marked differences but right now just assume that you know you're attaching the hardware with the software with the hardware so we have deployed it on the on, on a small desktop machine whatever the desktop machine that i am using right now for 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 demonstrating this this kind of desktop we have used and we we have put a tag on that we have put a tag on that saying that this is server machine please don't use it so this is what we have put a tag on that okay so this is what we have done on that so that nobody uses that nobody uses that okay and it's always running and it's always running okay so this is what we have done so can we use a desktop or a laptop certainly yes but if the concurrency is very very low if there are like 10 or 20 or 30 maybe your desktop or laptop can withstand the load okay but if it's a facebook where there are hundred thousands of users then this, this small desktop cannot handle those many users okay so imagine a bus and a bike okay so bus can handle okay bus can handle sorry 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 so bus can handle more load or more number of users or it can you know it can have more number of passengers okay that's like your servers like a proper server which is sitting there which is standalone and it's not used for anything else but just for that okay but a bike not a bike a bicycle is what you call it, right a motor bicycle okay motor bicycle okay can handle less load okay maybe two people or two passengers okay so this is more like my desktop you know acting as a server this is more like my desktop acting as a server okay but this is more like proper server uh, which is dedicated a machine which is developed only for the servers so yes your desktop laptop can be a server but in the real world in the real world the servers are not the desktops or the laptops but a but a hardware which is uniquely developed for handling multiple requests or huge number of requests so in the real world a server would look something like that okay so typically it should it, it is it is something like this or uh, maybe something like this okay yeah something like this if it's maybe a facebook this is what the servers look like you see is a huge number of uh, it's, a, it's a lot of hardware uh, all this hardware concurrently working and they will be taking huge number of requests okay but whether this is the server as big as this or your desktop they have the three main components guys one is the processor okay okay one is the processor one is your memory okay so some people know this as ram okay some people call this as ram and the third one is the hard disk okay these are the three components that they have whether you are going for such a big server rooms or it's a small desktop or a laptop these are the three main things but this one you know have this processor and memory and hard disk on a larger scale and the same thing on your desktop you have on a smaller scale the same things on your mobile phone maybe on an even smaller space or so even smaller scale but whether it's your mobile phone or a tab or a laptop desktop or a server all of them have this uh, have the same three things okay the processor for processing your request ram for for holding your programs and the hard disk for storing it uh, the storing all the data okay whether you are going for such a big server rooms or it's a desktop or your mobile phone these are the three main components okay so coming back coming back what is the server it's a combination of combination of software which is very very important plus Okay, so that's what is the server. So that's what is the server. <laughs> Just give me a moment, guys.
okay so sorry guys sorry for that let's continue so it's a combination of hardware and software so <clears throat> now let's go back to the ppt okay so can i use my laptop desktop certainly yes but if it's a small application and it is uh, it is used by a very few members i mean the concurrency is very less you can certainly do that okay now watch this carefully guys since you said you don't have any questions okay dinakar has a question yes we can use it and comes under one tier okay okay fine fine so fine dinakar okay so <clears throat> now now watch carefully guys if the software software okay server is a software right if the software is dealing the request related to the files okay so watch carefully whatever the software that you have built that is dealing with the files okay so dealing with the request related to the files okay you are sending the request a client is sending the request related to the files and your software is able to handle those files you can call this as a file server by the way there are different different types of servers or depending upon what you have built it for you can call that as a particular server if the software that you have built okay is for handling the request related to the files then you can call this as a file server then you can call this as a file server okay if the software is dealing the request related to the print then you can call this as print server these days you don't have any print servers because our printer machines itself the xerox printer machines you know inside itself they have the print server they are they are, they are installing the print server in, inside the xerox machine itself okay so you don't have a standalone print servers but probably when i started my career back in 2002 we used to have a separate print servers okay we used to have separate print servers so there is obviously on the print servers there is obviously a software which is installed and a small desktop could could be your print server so there is a software which is installed and it is used to handle the request related to the print so in the company let's say there are 500 people working and and at a point of time you know there could be multiple print requests from all these employees so this software will handle all the print servers it will put the all this all the all, all the request in queue it will take one request at a time and process the print request and sends the response back to the desktop saying that your print your print has been done is is ready to pick up or something like that so yeah these days you don't see a standalone print servers because it's already installed inside the machines okay now watch carefully if the software is is dealing the request related to the data is software is really dealing the request related to the data then what you call this guys then what you call this server as if the software that you have built is dealing the request related to the data you have sent a request related to the data saying that i want the password for that particular username i have the username but i want the password for that so you have sent a request like that okay then your server is able to send that password back to you saying that oh for this username this is the password if that server is able, if that software is able to do that what is that software we call it as what is that software we call that as a database server not a data server sujata it's a database server or a db server again i'm telling you it's a database server or a db server okay wonderful wonderful so <clears throat> now are you aware of those softwares guys any softwares any popular softwares which are available in the market and you are aware of any software are you aware of which deals with request related to the data wonderful oracle oracle is a software you know you can download it from the from 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 the internet and you install it on a particular install it on a particular hardware then that hardware becomes the oracle database okay SAP Hana, <laughs> Sujata, yes. So you have attended my SAP class. So yeah, SAP Hana is a uh, is a database server as well. SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server 2003 or something like that. You grab, okay. So DB2, Oracle. So these are all the softwares which deals with the request related to the data. You can send a request related to data to all these servers that you have given. Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle or or SAP Hana or Uh, or a db2 okay so either you can write a query or you can how can you say you can you cannot go stand in front of database server and say that i want i want all the usernames and passwords that you have then the database server cannot understand there is a format in which you can send the request from the client you write some queries like this okay look at this 
If you go stand in front of the database server and say that, oh, I want blah, 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 it will, it will not give it to you. There is a way you have to ask this. Okay. So you say you ask something like this by writing some queries like this. Select star from table one. Okay. Where? Okay. Where username is equal to more. Okay. So this is how you can request. This is what we call it as a query. Okay. Okay, a query. So <coughs> you write the queries like this and I send a request to when you send, you know, request related to data. How can you request the server by writing some queries like this? Okay, if you write some queries like this and you send it to the database server, then the database server will send a response a response back for this uh, query saying that oh for the username called query. This is the password. For the username called query uh, Kumar, this is the password. For the username called Kumar, this is the password is what my database server will send it back. You see, it is de dealing with the data, uh, dealing with the request related to the data. How can you send the request? By writing some queries like this. You can send the request to this database server. Okay. So it gets interesting, guys. Okay. <clears throat> now watch carefully. If the software is dealing with the request related to the application, the application could be your Facebook. The application could be your Gmail. The application could be your IRCTC. If you're in India, you know that. Uh, the application could be your LinkedIn. The application could be anything. Yahoo Mail. Okay. But if the if the requests are related to the application, what, what do my, what do I mean by request related to the application? Saying that I wanted to log into the Facebook. This is the request related to the application. I wanted to delete a post. On the Facebook. This is the relate. This is the request related to the Facebook application. I wanted to log out. This is the request related to the Facebook application. So any of those requests will, which is related to that specific application, okay? And if the software is dealing with that, then that software is called the application server, and popularly call it as app server. Popularly called as app server. So going forward. Whatever the tester you are guys, you know, this is very, very important. You are a DBA, you are, you are, what do you say? You are, you are a business analyst, you are a manual tester, you are, you are a performance tester, you are going anywhere. You are in the software industry, you are supposed to know all this. The bare minimum you have to know is what is the server. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm spending a little more time. If you know all this and if you find this boring guys, you know, please, 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 you know, uh, bear with me. Okay, for a certain period of time. Now you see this is the client. Okay from the client. Okay from the client you have sent the request related to the files. Okay on the back end there is a server. Okay there is a software and this software is able to understand the request related to the files process those requests and finally sending sending the response back. You can you can call this as a file server. Let's say I, let's say the request is I wanted to store this file on this server. Okay or then the request goes and the the server will process the request which means that it will take the file and store it on the server and finally send the response back saying that oh your file has been successfully saved or you say that I wanted to retrieve this file. I know you have all these files. I wanted to get this file. So that's your request. So then the server will understand the request that you need a particular file and it will process the request which means that it will get the file and it will send the file back to you. So. Uh, this is this software is capable of doing this. If the software is capable of doing this, then you can call this as a file service. Okay. Again, the same story with the print service. Okay. You from the from the client machine, you said that I wanted to print these hundred files. I wanted to print these hundred files, a hundred hundred pages. Okay. Then the server, which is at the back end, understands that you wanted to print those hundred pages. Then it will process your request, which means that it will print out those 100 pages and finally it will send the response back saying that, oh, all the 100 pages has been printed out. Come back here and take the take the printouts. Okay, then you can call that as a print server. Now you see <coughs> from the client, from the client, you send a request. What is the request you said? Select star from table where username is Kumar. What you are saying by this, by by writing this query, by writing this query, what are you telling? What are you telling to the server? Saying that in the in the table called one, in the table called one, there is a username called user. There is a username called Kumar. There is a username called Kumar. Okay. I want all the information related to him. I want all the data 
when you said star when you said star what do you mean when you say star i want every single thing which is related to kumar give it to me that's what you are telling by writing this query by the way we call this as query okay by writing this query what are you telling to the server or what are you requesting the server that you have a table called one wonderful in the table called one you have a username called kumar okay wonderful i by by putting star what you are saying i want all the information which is related to the kumar okay so if you are sending this request <coughs> any software which is capable of understanding you understand this request okay so let's say there is a software which is sitting behind first it will if if it can understand the request and process the request process the request means it will go to the table one it will search for the username called kumar and it will bring out all the information related to kumar and once it has all once it holds all the data okay it will not keep it with it it will send the response back to the client it will send the response back to the client saying that oh this is what the information that you have asked for this is what the information that you are asked for if this software is capable of doing this then you can call this as a database server this capable of doing it then you can call this as a database server you need not have to build this software or you need not have to create this software the softwares are already created and available in the market you just need to purchase it okay like your oracle db2 microsoft sql server and all that but if you wanted to create yourself nobody is stopping you you can start creating it for yourself okay now of 5 minutes okay okay so <clears throat> so this is what is a database server okay so the database server also remember that it stores all your data as well okay it stores all your data as well next let's look into this a little bit when it stores all the data if it's an amazon if this is the database server of the amazon what kind of data do you think it stores guys okay let's say this database server belongs to amazon okay i'm switching with the examples from facebook to gmail to amazon guys to get a feel for you know for different applications i could have stick to only one application but i'm sticking i'm 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 switching to different applications but let's assume okay this database server is related to an application called amazon okay an application called amazon so what kind of data that it stores guys any guess i want to hear from all of you by the way i want everybody to participate in the class guys please don't think that you know this guy keeps talking you know we just need to hear i want to hear from you as well okay so it stores all your orders wonderful it stores all the customer data like you know whenever you register there is a username and password and you give your street street address phone number and all that it will store all the information as well wonderful jagan yeah, or shrivali it will store all the product related data like cell phones desktops all the things that it is selling okay it will check it will store all your orders it will store the purchase history wonderful mail okay so all this data is stored okay so whatever you can see from the front end it will store all the data and more okay like usernames and password the product related data the customer related data your usernames passwords your your history so it will store all and the, and the and the credit card numbers you know all that it will store okay so that's what it is all the transaction details yeah it's they are wonderful yeah so we'll take a break guys 10 minutes okay so it will give you a time to refresh okay so we have been speaking for last uh, close to 15 minutes just uh, take a 10 minute break once we come back we'll continue with this wonderful interesting topics
So guys, are you able to hear me? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so wonderful. Uh, so before the break, before the break, we have looked into what is a database server and what kind of information that it will store as well. So the database server not only understands your request process, the request sends the response back, it has an additional responsibility of storing the data as well. Okay, so <clears throat> now, now look at this, a software, okay, so which understands the request related to the application. I've already told you what is a uh, request related to the application. Let's say the application is, is our Facebook, Okay, or let's say let's say the application is the Amazon. Okay, so you have there is a request that is for logging into Amazon, and if the software is able to take that request of logging in, process the request, and sends the response back, then this particular server we can call it as a uh, Amazon's application server. Amazon's application server. Let's say you have sent a request to a request to add an item to the cart, add an item to the cart. So the server is able to serve that request or the software is able to serve that request and is able to add that particular item to the cart and sends the response back saying that it has been added to the cart. Then, uh, you know, this kind of software, we can call this as an application server and application server for that particular application, which is Amazon. So we can call this as an Amazon application server in case it is taking the request related to the Amazon. In case if this uh, application server is taking the request related to Facebook, we can obviously call it as a Facebook application server or app server. So going, for, going forward, I will use the term app server. Okay. So app server is a very, very important term. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, that's what it is. So what does it contains? What does it contains? It contains the business logic guys. It contains the business logic or it contains the logic. Okay, so it is able to serve the request for logging or able to serve the request for add to cart or able to serve the request for your uh, purchase or delete and all that because it has a logic. The developer has created a logic and, and that logic has been put over here. Or in other words, the developer has created a code and he has created the code and put on this. Okay, he's created a logic and, it has, and he has put that code over here. So and that code is for the business. Anything is a business guy. So Amazon, he's doing business. Facebook is doing business. Gmail, they're doing business. So this logic has been created for the Facebook, sorry, for, for the business. So we call this as a business logic. We call this as a business logic. Okay. So anything, any application that is built, typically that is for the business. They don't do it usually for, oh, Usually it is for the business, whether it's Yahoo Mail, Gmail, Facebook, Amazon, uh, eBay. These are all for the business. Okay, so LinkedIn. So there is a logic that is developed for that business and that logic is sitting over here. And that is the reason why it is able to serve those requests like login requests, logout requests, um, add to cart request and all those requests, cancel history or cancel the order, clear the history and all that it is able to. Uh, it is able to serve or it is able to do or take those requests because there is a logic that has been created and already put over here. So the logic that has been created, we can call that as a development or developer or development. Okay. So the software has been, uh, uh, the process is the development. Okay. Or created. So usually the developer will create that particular logic and he will put that on that particular machine or the Okay, the developer takes care of creating that logic or building that logic or in simple words, they will create a code, a piece of code so that it will be able to take care of those requests. <coughs> so is it clear so far guys? Now you got an idea as to what is the server? Everybody got an idea as to what is the server? Everybody. Okay. So there's only few yeses. So hope uh, you guys are still following me. Wonderful. <clears throat> now, so far we have like this. These are the only servers. No, there are so many servers like session servers, firewall servers, any server as I've told you, any software which is capable of taking a request which is belonging to a particular family, then you can call that as a server. Let's say it is taking the request related to the firewall, then it's called a firewall server or a session, session server, it's managing the session, session server. Like this, there are lots of servers. 
okay but here i am discussing the servers which are important there is a web server like this there are a lot of servers so i'm to give you a feel for what is a server i have discussed handful of servers like file server print server uh, database server application server and all that okay but there are whole lot of servers but for you as a performance testers to start with if you know these servers this should be good enough guys so you can explore more if you wanted to always okay now to proceed further to proceed further and start understanding the architecture i need to define something called application layers okay this is just a definition so that i can use it guys so whatever i am going to do now i will define something or i will categorize certain activity into different layers and i will name i will name them as certain layers so that it is easy for me to explain the software architecture so as to explain the software architecture okay i am creating these layers or i am naming i am creating the names for certain layers so let's look at that let's look at that okay the first one is the presentation layer first one is the presentation layer as you can see it will accept user inputs displays data and any result communication on the user interface you see this is the user interface as i've told you the user interface could be your desktop laptop tablet uh, mobile phone anything you know which can take some input and it can and display some output okay which can take from the mobile also you can give an input from the tab also you can give an input from the desktop from the laptop you can give an input so anything which can take an input so that's the presentation layer that's the presentation layer okay now the next layer is the business logic layer or logic tier okay first one is the presentation layer or the presentation tier next one is the business logic layer or the log business logic tier business logic layer or the business logic tier okay so this layer process the commands make the logical decisions and perform the calculations okay so from the front end let's say this is an amazon application okay from the front end or from, instead of saying front end let me start using the term called presentation layer from the presentation layer you said get transaction history you say what did you what did you say get transaction history now the request goes to the business logic layer so here it will you know it will process your request okay make logical decisions and perform the calculations so what it will do it will try to get all the transactions from the last one year let's say you say get the transaction history from last one year so there is there is a logic over here okay there is a logic or there is a program there is a code over here you know which will try to get the transactions from last one year okay which will make an attempt to get the transactions from last one year but all this data all this data or all the transaction history all this data is present where is present where it is there in the database okay or the data tier okay or the dml layer data management layer or the data tier okay so this is a presentation layer or the presentation tier this is the business logic layer or the business logic tier and this is the data tier or the data management layer okay so what is what happens over here here the information information is the data is stored and retrieved from the database file system so here the data is stored or the information is stored and when required you can you will be able to retrieve it as well but from the required you will be able to retrieve it as well please mute yourself guys shraddha i am able to hear it please mute yourself self mute and when you wanted to speak you can speak thank you shraddha okay but unmute it and speak whenever you want okay there is no issues with that okay so <clears throat> now you see this is this is the data type what it can do it can store the data and when retrieve when required you will be able to retrieve what is retrieve to get the data what is retrieve to get the data okay so your simple excel sheet can be your database guys anything which stores the data right anything which stores the data simple excel sheet can be your database simple notepad file if it is having all the data that could be your database simple excel sheet uh, with, with all the data you can call that as a database or the softwares like data oracle and all that can be your uh, can be your database but the problem with the excel sheets or the notepads is storing is fine but retrieving becomes difficult retrieving becomes difficult that's the reason why we have some softwares like oracle db2 and all that so which are little complicated lot of needs to be done but you have the advantages as well when you want to retrieve some information it becomes that much easy imagine you put 1 million data on the excel sheet and you wanted certain records out of this 1 million record so it becomes a really tough thing okay so that's the reason why nobody use an excel or or or, or a notepad file as a database okay but 
any collection of data is a database. If that collection of database is there in a notepad file, you still call it as a database. Collection of data is there in an Excel sheet, you can still call that as a database. But the thing is, in a realistic sense, when you have to retrieve that data, it becomes difficult. So they, they will not be used as a database. They will not be used as a database. Okay, now let's see what is happening from the presentation layer. You said get transaction history and the logic layer creates a query, creates the query, sends the query saying that I want the transactions created by Kumar, Kumar Gupta from the last one year. That kind of query, it, this business logic layer will create that or it is already there. So it will, it will adjust or it will, um, yeah, in other words, it will create the query and that query will be fired on this database. That query will be fired on the database. Who is creating the query? Not a person standing over there. This business logic, this business logic, okay? Now, the database, now you are trying to retrieve. You see, from the database, you are trying to retrieve some data. What is the data that you are trying to retrieve? The transaction history from last one year. By whom? The transaction history of all the customers? No, the transaction history of only Kumar Gupta. So, now, if the, qu the query is fired on the database, the database will give you, oh, there are three transactions from last one year created by Kumar Gupta, and these are the three transactions, like transaction one, transaction two, and transaction three, okay? And finally, the data will be sent back to the logic layer, okay? So, the data will be received by the business logic layer, okay? Or the logic tire will receive all that data. It will format, it will massage, it will put in a way that you can understand. And finally, it will send that response back to the presentation layer saying that, oh, iPhone, $500 bought on 29th July. Keyboard, $20 bought on 3rd July. USB port, $35 bought on 2nd July. So you'll be able to display it. You see, when you say get transaction history, so much of the story happens behind the scenes which you don't even know. Okay? And all that happens within 2 seconds. All that happens typically within 2 seconds. Okay? Shreda, I'll take those questions. Okay? But after the class, it's little irrelevant at this point of time. So I'll definitely take those questions, but only after the class. Okay? If they're relevant, I would have taken it at, at now only. Okay? Now, you see, from where you can see, you, here you saw the output and here you are giving the input. So, this is what is the presentation layer or the presentation uh, tire. Here, there is a program. The program could be in Java, the program could be in C, the program could be in C++, the program could be in Python, the program could be in .NET, the program could be any of the programming languages, but there is a program. Okay? That program is the business logic tire or the business logic layer. So it, it creates a query and it has queried the database. And you see, this is where you're storing the data. So you call this as a DML or the data tab. You see, you can query that or what is meant by query? You're requesting something. What is that request? I want the transactions which is made by Kumar Gupta from last one year. You're requesting, you're requesting and this request is able to take that request. I mean, this tire is able to take that request. So you call this as a data tire or the DML. So what does the data tire has? It has the data, it has the data, and it has the ability to take the request and retrieve the data and send the response password. Well. It is the ability to take the request which is related to the data and it will retrieve the data and sends the response back as well. In this case, there are only three transactions from last one year, so you have retrieved. And does it sense directly to the presentation layer? No, it sends it to the business logic layer from which it has requested, from, from where it has, it, uh, from where it got the request. So the response is sent back to the place where it got the re request. Okay, so now the business business tire or the business logic tire will receive all that transactions, will put you in a format that it can under, that you can understand as an end user and finally sends it back to the presentation layer wherein you can see it. So these are the three layers guys, presentation layer, business logic layer and data tire or the data management layer. Are you clear with this one? This is the basic. Only if you understand this, then I can proceed further and I can start talking about the software architecture. If you don't understand this, there is no point going further and you will not be able to understand all the architectures. There are quite a few number of architectures, very, very interesting, very, very nice and very important for you to know it. All this while, you know, so far in the last one year, I've created a background so that you can start understanding what is architecture. Now we haven't started the architecture at all. Okay, if you have any questions, this is the time you should ask me. So there's a couple of questions from Shreddha. Okay, let's see what is that questions. 
like users data can be created this has nothing to do with the users we are talking about the application strata okay we are not talking about uh, the the load runner yet okay this has nothing to do with the load runner what we are talking about is your application under test the application under test could be your amazon it could be your uh, facebook or it could be your gmail okay so here we are not even talking about the virtual users okay yeah so uh, i hope i have answered that question or maybe i haven't understood your question in full shraddha shraddha you can speak if you want it yes uh, actually i just wanted to say uh, uh, like uh, when we create a virtual users in our app yeah in your load testing tool okay yeah but uh, can we create the virtual data means uh, through the database layer can we create virtual data uh, like uh, because uh, many times we face the issue like we don't have data so we can't perform the performance testing okay in our uh, means database environment but how can we create the virtual data okay. uh, that uh, should not be the product okay so shraddha that's a different chapter altogether you are talking about the test data setup for the application okay so after the class it will take at least 10 to 15 minutes for me to answer that i'll take that after the class okay by the way you don't call that as a virtual data okay that is the data setup that is required for your performance testing i'll talk about that after the class okay it will take 15 to 20 minutes okay it's an important activity uh, other people can stay back and listen to that as well okay that is the only question yeah we can skip for now okay so wonderful i hope everybody is understanding i hope i am not going fast so is is it okay guys the pace with which i am going is it okay or should i slow down a little bit all of them i want to hear if somebody finds it fast don't be shy you can always you know open it open it up and tell okay okay so there are few students hand picked you know uh, majid okay uh imam okay and meli uh, meli is uh, pretty forward imam and uh, uh, io and rahana okay i want you to be ahead of the class yesterday i have sent out an email i am not sure you know if you have seen that email okay so please do that okay over the weekend spend i have already sent you the recorded videos from the previous sessions i want you to watch i want you to be be ready before the actual session starts okay i don't want you because i don't know if i can if i am not sure you know if you if you can lag behind or something like that but i don't want that to happen okay please do that i hope you have uh, seen that email from me please at least acknowledge that email all of you who have received that email please acknowledge that again for the other students there is no partiality guys okay i am not paying any attention to more um, more to some students less to some students no i want to give equal attention but i have ha hand picked few students and you know i want them to catch up because they are not from the it field that's my concern okay and most of you are from the it field so you know i'm sure you'll be able to catch up but certain students who are not from the it field when i start creating the code okay you feel that you are completely out of place okay and you are all at sea so i don't want that to happen to the students that is the reason why i've hand picked few students and gave gave certain you know certain things okay but other students please don't think that you know paying more attention to some students less attention less attention no okay so for you for me all of you are same okay now the architecture starts guys now the architecture starts so it's already 8:20s guys do you have it in you to listen for 15 more minutes or sh should we quit at this point of time i want to hear from all of you so can we continue the class for 15 more minutes can you take the information and process it okay continue okay thank you phil can we uh, can we continue it tomorrow sir okay so uh, shridha says continue tomorrow let's see uh, I, i i want to see the responses from all of them okay so uh, i want to hear from all of them okay uh, so everybody is saying continue shridha just 10 more minutes please okay 10 more minutes please for sujata anything is fine okay so we'll go with the voting system okay so a lot, lot of people are saying continue 10 more minutes uh, shraddha and we will be done but trust me this is very very interesting very very interesting okay so <clears throat> we'll cover only the two tier architecture tomorrow when we when we come back we we'll start looking into wonderful things okay trust me 
okay straight that don't think that you know i'm i'm uh, i'm not taking your request okay please don't think in those lines you know the class contains total 19 people i have to take all the responses from all of them and come to consensus and then uh, you know go ahead so a lot of people want wanted me to continue so i'm just continuing but that too for 10 minutes okay so you see yeah sure yeah yeah thank you thanks for understanding so we are looking at something called a two tier architecture or a client side architecture client server this is back in the day guys probably we are talking about maybe 1996 maybe 96 95 96 that's when this first architecture came into picture that's when people realized that oh all these machines can talk to each other they, we can we can have these different machines talk to each other and we can create something wonderful this is what people understood and they started you know uh, started you know attaching these different machines with each other and then you know coming out with this architecture again i'm telling you this two tier architecture is back in the day one of the starting architectures the very first architecture i think is the file server okay after that they came out with this two tier they started realizing the power of attaching the multiple machines together and see the wonder it can create okay so this is one of the starting the very starting architecture okay uh, and and then they had these two machines talk to each other one machine they called it as client and the other machine they are called it as a server okay so what happened is you know from the client machine they have sent the request to this machine which they called it as server and the server machine obviously it can understand the request process the request sends the response back it has sent the response back to the client wonderful okay this is your two tier architecture now we we talk the same architecture we will talk in terms of layers so we in the previous uh, slide we understood that there are three layers the presentation layer the business logic layer and the database management layer okay there are three logics and see how these three logics are implemented in this two tier architecture or the client server architecture okay so <coughs> the presentation layer is sitting on the client the presentation layer is sitting on the client and the business logic layer and the database management layer is sitting on the server or is sitting on the server okay the same client server architecture now we are looking in terms of the layers in terms of the layers now you see the presentation layer is sitting on the client the business logic layer and the database management layer is sitting on the server so this is the simple architecture the business logic layer remains the code that you have created made in java c c++ .net python that code and database management layer is your database so the business which the develop the logic or the code which the developer has created that is sitting over here and your database like oracle and all that is sitting over here and just the presentation layer is sitting over here this is your simple client server architecture this is what we call this as thin client what we call this as thin client what we call this as thin client why we are calling this as thin client not because the desktop or you know the screen is thin not because your screen is thin the screen from where you are accessing this is thin no because it is doing only one job which is the presentation layer okay it is doing a very less job compared to the server server is doing two jobs what it is doing it is doing the job of the uh, the the business logic and it is also doing the job of the database storing the database retrieving and all that storing the data retrieving the data and all that it is doing two jobs okay and the client is doing only one job so that's the reason why we are calling this as a thin client when there is a thin client there should be what there should be what when there is a thin client there should be what guys there should be what if there is a thin client so what is the other thing that you can expect what is the other thing that you can expect what is the other thing that you can expect i want to hear from just give it a guess i know you don't know it uh, but what what is the guess wonderful thick line or popularly call it as fat line okay when there is a thin client obviously there should be a thick client as well otherwise they wouldn't have named this as a thin client okay so there is a thick client and fat client so <clears throat> now give it a, give it a guess give it a guess for a thin client the presentation layer is over here the business logic layer and the database management layer is over here but if it is a thick client what do you expect if it is a thick client what do you expect guys 
if it's a thick line, what do you expect on the client? What can you expect on the client? So on the client, you just have the presentation layer over here. If it's a thick line, what can you expect? Unmute yourself and you can speak. Present in database, both layers will be there. Okay, so Shredda says it's a presentation layer and database. Layer. This is what Shredda says. Okay, so what are the combinations we can have? One is presentation layer and data management layer. Or what is the other possibility? The presentation layer and <coughs> business logic layer. Business so logic layer. Yeah, so let's say this is option one and this is option two. So which one would you go for? Option one or option two or option both one and two? What do you think, guys? Both options. Both options. Melly says option two. Uh, Majid says both of them. I want to hear from all of them, guys. You know, I gave you just option. Now you have to pick. There are three. Option one, option two, or option one and two. Chaudhary says option two. Krishna option two. Sneha option two. Okay. Uh, Tulsi Ram says two. Okay. So some of them are saying both the options. Some of them are saying with the option two. Okay. So honestly speaking, it's the option two, guys. Okay, honestly speaking, it's the option two. Okay, you see, there is a thick line, and a thick line is where you have both the presentation layer and the business logic layer, and on the server you have the data data tag. On the server you have the data tag, and this is what we call it as a thick line. And this is a favorite interview question, guys. You are going as a manual tester. You are going as a developer. You are going as a Oracle expert. Somehow people like to ask this interview question. I don't know why, but they say, what is the difference between a thin client and thick client? It's not at all difficult. Okay. Now let's try to understand from, from the layers. We have understood what it is, but let's try to understand what this means. What this means means whatever the code the developer has created, whatever the code the developer has created, you're putting it on the client machine. Obviously, the presentation, which means that you are able to see the result and you are able to give the input from the client machine. That is fine. That's not an issue. But whatever the developer has created the code, you are putting it on the client. Putting on the client. Can you come out with some application wherein you have to go ahead and install it on your on your desktop or a laptop? Can you come out with some application? Can you remember anything wherein? You have downloaded something and installed. Whatever you have downloaded is a code, right? Whatever you have downloaded, it is a code. Okay, you're downloading and installing it on your client machine. Wonderful Sneha, Snap, Skype, okay, Skype. I think I have Skype installed on my machine. You see, I have downloaded and installed the Skype on my machine. Okay, so this is a thick client. Go to meeting, wonderful. Go to meeting is both thick client and thin client. Okay, so if you're, if you're, if you're accessing from the browser itself, then that is a thin client. But if you're downloading something like, you know, like this, I don't know if you're able to see this. Okay. But let me, let me take the screenshot so that you see this. Okay. If you're downloading, I hope you're, you're able to see this now. Okay. This is something that you have downloaded and using it. So this is a thick line, but you can, you can do that as from the browser itself become done. That becomes a thin client. But if you're downloading any desktop applications or thick clients, wonderful Sujata, that's what it is. Back in the day, now you nobody is doing. Back in the day, I used to use a messenger called Yahoo Messenger. Okay, Yahoo Messenger. Okay, so when we're talking messenger, I'm very bad with the spellings, guys. Okay, so if there is any spelling mistakes, please uh, ignore it. Okay, back in 2004, I'm speaking about, okay, I have to download this Yahoo Messenger from online and install it on a machine. Okay, uh, so that I can use the messenger. Now everything is online. I know that. But back in the day, I used to do that. Even now people do it. I don't know. Uh, no, I, I'm not even using the Yahoo Messenger these days, but I'm just telling you. Okay, that's the first thing which comes to my mind when I talk about thick client or fine client. Okay, but these days it's very, very rarely used. Uh, not these days. Okay, uh, uh, let me, I, I'm extremely sorry. I shouldn't have said that. But these days, the two tier architecture became very popular. So it was a little popular till 2003, 2004. Then it completely went into extinction. But from last three years, two to three years, this two tier architecture became very, very, very popular. Why do you think it is? Okay, from last three years, Okay, it became popular again. Okay, so it was popular from 1996 to probably 2000, 2002. Uh, then it went into extinction, but from the last three years again, it became really, really popular. 
why do you think so guys any any idea any guesses based on the explanation that i've given you based on the explanation that i've given you any ideas why as why it has become very very popular again think about it because this is easy to maintain okay it was always easy to maintain so why did why did it become extinct again then i'm just asking you it's totally okay if you don't understand i mean if you can't give uh, uh, but good try sujata you you have tried you know uh, sorry shraddha good good try good try okay so wonderful uh, <coughs> uh so uh, thanks to that you have been active i want people to be like you okay all of them okay to be active continuously giving responses that gives me energy okay okay wonderful igram so these days because of mobile technology okay so on your mobile do you install any apps guys on your mobile do you install any apps okay on my mobile if i open there is an app called whatsapp there is an app called facebook there is an app there are no so many apps that i have installed on my mobile phone and those are obviously the clients and they follow the client server architecture are you getting it because of the mobile technology okay these days again the client server architecture has become popular okay so on your mobile do you install any apps guys did you install any apps on your on your smartphones did you on your smartphones yeah yeah so th those are all thick lines don't you do, i mean do you agree again i said the presentation layer not only is the desktop it could be your mobile phone as well i've been repeating time and repeating anything which wherein you can give an input and it can give you the output that's a presentation layer okay so it's your mobile phone as well it, your mobiles can be your presentation layer as well so uh, could be your client machines as well and these days on the mobile phones you are installing all the apps so those are all the thick lines okay the same okay facebook you have installed the app then it's a thick client on the same mobile phone you didn't install the app but you are browsing using the browser then that becomes a thick client okay the same facebook on the mobile using the browser you are using the facebook then that is a thick client on the on the mobile phone you installed the app called facebook then that becomes a thick client okay and because of this mobile technologies again client server architecture is becoming popular these days okay it will not be a pure client server architecture behind the scenes there are few changes but we'll come to that complications little later let's try to understand the three tier entire and all that then we'll come to the complications okay so this is what it is guys for today i hope you have enjoyed the class learned something new that you don't know okay so tomorrow it's a very very important class okay so you you will be learning tomorrow about uh continuation this is the two tier right so you will be learning about three tier okay and then entire okay entire and we will look at a sample architecture okay like a real time in a real time how an architecture of the application looks like so sample architecture of a real time project let's say real time you know real time application okay so this is very very important after understanding all of this okay i'll show you a real time application architecture hopefully you will understand that so this is where you know the things will become little tricky and i'm not sure you you know you have to pay a little bit of attention when i'm showing you the real time application it can go you know little complicated so yes so tomorrow is important guys so very very important day so please attend that okay and if you have any issues concerns with the speed of the class or the communication or something please let me know uh, some of the things i can fix some of the things i cannot fix but if you are talking about my accent i will not be able to fix it okay but if you are talking about the 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 i'm uh, the fastness if i am going too fast or too slow um, I, i'll i'll consider that request you know looking uh, looking at the class and all that i'll be able to consider that request and definitely will be able to you know implement it but please come out with the suggestions whether i will be able to implement or not i'll see and if i can definitely but if you have any issues you can and whoever have paid the money and if you are not liking the class uh, this is not what you have signed up for please call me and ask uh, please uh, please call me we'll come out with some arrangements for you okay thank you guys 
uh, see you tomorrow. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me take some questions. Okay, Rupa, I'm fine if you can show my project and help me here. If that's okay for you. Okay, save the word document. Thank you. So, Rupa, just give me a few minutes, Rupa. Okay, I've been speaking, speaking from last one of one and a half hour, and uh, <laughs> not only speaking, I have to concentrate a lot. I need a. Few okay. Minutes. Yeah, yeah. No problem. That's okay. Fine. Yeah. I will connect separately, okay? Or we will let this connection be there. I'll stop recording and then you can uh, you can share your project.